life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. Now those are the words of Jackie Robinson and he certainly impacted generations of people. Robinson, of course, he broke the color barrier when he joined the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. A new book called Jackie Robinson in quotes explores his legacy through his own words. I spoke with its author, Danny Perry. It's interesting. Um, when people talk about his significance, not necessarily the greatest player of his generation, but and I went through quote after quote in terms of where from former um, Commissioner Sela gone down, they without reservation say that he had the greatest impact, and some say not just as an, as an athlete, uh, as basically a person or a personality in the 20th, uh, the latter part of the 20th century. Were you surprised not just by how much esteem they hold him, but how much of an impact he had even beyond baseball? That's my biggest surprise. I'm so glad you asked that. My biggest surprise was that Jackie Robinson did not die because of the, his diabetes and, and uh, the burden he had as a baseball player specifically, but also he died young at the age of 53 because of what happened after. After he left baseball, he became a, he said, I do not want to sit on the sidelines. And he became a, a writer and a speech giver, and he um, uh, was a fundraiser for the NAACP, and then for uh, Martin Luther King, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And then uh, he also just went and gave speeches down in the South uh, during the 60s when they, he wasn't really protected, and he saw all the things that were going on there. And he became a very vocal advocate for social justice and equal opportunity and first-class citizenship for all African Americans and it really took a toll on him. And it really ran the gamut, uh, didn't it? I mean from Malcolm X on one end to being a supporter of Richard Nixon, um, it really uh, talk about interesting conversations. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. I ca call that chapter Man in the Middle because here's a guy who went back and forth between mainstream politics. He was somebody courted by all the presidential candidates and gubernatorial candidates uh, from the Republican Party, Richard Nixon, Barry Goldwater, who, who uh, Robinson wouldn't even speak to, uh, Nelson Rockefeller, a liberal Republican from New York, and then he was also courted by Hubert Humphrey and John Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson. And he was an important political figure. We don't really realize that. Uh, and that was the big surprise, you know, just seeing all these letters that he would write to Richard Nixon and Eisenhower saying, you're not doing enough for the cause of civil rights. And he'd just agitate them and agitate them to a degree where he was put on the uh, threat list for Richard Nixon. Always good to be, in, in retrospect, be on the enemies list uh, of Nixon. Now, to that end, well, he I, was a militant. He was a militant, and, and a he lot was of people, a mainstream get to that. A lot of people, a militant. A lot of people yeah. confused because they saw the Jackie Robinson who first came up and the agreement he had with Ricky that he'd take it, um, and they thought that he was an appeaser, and then certainly that element of uh, his support of, of Nixon, yeah. but there was so much from the latter part of his career after 49 when he made a deal with Ricky, he wouldn't take it anymore, and he'd fight back, and then also some of the political positions he took in his post-playing career. He was just a very, very brave man. Uh, the thing with Ricky, R Ricky's genius was to actually sign this guy uh, as somebody who would not talk back for two years. He would not talk back to umpires. He would not uh, react to uh, indignities and insults from, from coming from the other, uh, the other team's dugout or from the fans in, in the stadiums. And how did Ricky pick this guy who from a very early age always talked back, and not only talked back, but fought back and had fights with people and was thrown in jail a few times? How did Ricky pick this this guy to not talk for two years, but he was the brilliance as Robinson didn't talk for two years. And then after two years, Ricky said, do whatever you want. And, uh, and Robinson became not only vocal on the field, but off the field. In his wildest dreams, would he ever imagine that A, Hall of Fame, but B, more significantly, mm -hmm. his number would be retired in 42, would have the significance it ended up having? 
by the time he died in 1972, he was actually pushed aside by the uh, black community, uh, the militant black community, and baseball had never welcomed him back really other than that celebration at the World Series. So, and it is, his popularity and his fame had diminished. So, it, it took, in fact, about three decades until Bud Selig, who was, I'm not a big fan of his, but he did bring Jackie Robinson back to the forefront, retired Uniform 42 in 1997, and, and now we celebrate Jackie Robinson. But uh, I think you're uh, heading in the right direction. He had no idea that he would be celebrated this way. Give me a, give me a quote or two um, that if uh, folks get the book uh, might stand out to them. His most famous quote is, a life is not important except the impact it makes on the lives of others. This is on his tombstone. Now, there's a great quote by Buck O'Neill, who was his teammate in the uh, Negro Leagues of the Kansas City Monarchs, and this is, I think, my favorite, is, I never met a man without uh, prejudice other than Jackie Robinson. Can you imagine what Jackie Robinson went through from the time he was a little kid dealing with racists, bigots, uh, white people uh, who uh, put him down, insulted him, and he never had prejudice. I think that's uh, remarkable. And uh, Jackie Robinson, that's why he stands today for, as a symbol of racial harmony. Again, the book, um, Jackie Robinson in quotes, Remarkable Life of Baseball's Most Significant Player, Danny Perry. Danny, thank you again for the time. Oh, thanks so much, Richard.